Welcome to Celestial Insights, a weekly podcast that brings the stars down to earth. I'm your host, astrologer, coach, and intuitive Celeste Brooks. My purpose is to provide practical, unique, and insightful guidance to help you navigate the energies of the week like a boss. Hello, this is Celeste of Astrology by Celeste, and on this episode, I will discuss the astrology for the week of December 1st. So first, a few announcements. Number one, I'm offering a special 10% discount for all listeners of the podcast on readings until December 15th. So if you'd like a reading to talk about what may be coming up for you in 2023 based on the astrological weather to help you know where to divert your energies, where there'll be more ease rather than fight against the tides, go over to astrologybyceleste.com, my website, and when you book your reading, use coupon code PODCAST10. Also, I am joining two of my favorite astrologers, Tiffany Herlich and Sarah L. Harar, for a predictions panel on December 21st, the solstice, where we're going to talk about what we see coming up with 2023, including all of the main aspects. We're having some big shifts. Pluto is moving into Aquarius, Saturn into Pisces, and there's going to be a switch of the nodes into Aries and Libra, as well as, you know, more eclipses and things. Venus will go retrograde. It's going to be a year of a lot of things. So we'll be sharing with you all of those transits, as well as our thoughts on how they may play out in the collective, as well as people's personal lives. There'll be a link in the show notes. It's only $33. It'll be a 90-minute discussion on Zoom. So I hope to see you there. So the theme of this week is the throes of passion. And there are three big things I want you to think about. Number one, there's a lot of chaotic energy this week. So Mercury, the planet of communication and mental thought processes, Venus, the planet of love, beauty, harmony, and relationships, and Mars, the planet of action and assertion are all what's called out of bounds. What this means is in terms of the relationship to the sun, which is considered the boundary, the sun calms the energy down. These planets are going past the limits of the sun, and so they'll be careening, answering to themselves in some sense, but they're also answering to Jupiter that makes everything bigger. And the reason they're answering to Jupiter is because Mercury and Venus are in the sign of Sagittarius, and Jupiter rules Sagittarius, so they're reporting in to the sign ruler. Mars in Gemini is reporting into Mercury in Sagittarius, which is reporting into Jupiter in Pisces. The good things is that Jupiter is at home in Pisces, but Jupiter makes everything bigger and magnifies things. So you have these three planets that are out of bounds, like kind of Uranian type energy where there are just exaggerated responses and it could be what we will be seeing as well as answering into, you know, Jupiter, which makes everything just bigger. So expect some wild behavior this week from people and what they say and what they do in relationships between people who, you know, know each other as well as strangers. Yeah. And they're all immutable signs. The mutable signs are what's called double bodied. So they tend to have two natures. Most people are familiar with the I guess you would call it the stereotype that some Gemini energy can be, you know, a little bit two-faced where people talk out both sides of their mouths. Sagittarius energy is non-committal. So people like pull their feet in and out of relationships, actually in and out of their mouths. (laughs) If they have strong Sag energy, things like that. So there's this real adaptable and changeable nature with the mutable sign. So that adds to some of the chaos. 
And it's not necessarily bad things are going to be happening. It's just wild things are going to be happening. Yeah, I think we're going to hear a lot of wild news from the World Cup. Oh, and before I move on to that, all three of these planets, which are personal planets, so we really can feel more the energy more intimately, are all squaring Neptune. They're making Neptune is at the apex of a mutable T-square. So Neptune in Pisces, And the release is in Virgo. So people can get extra critical this week. So be aware of that as well. So I think we're going to hear wild news from the World Cup where there's going to be, you know, a lot of fancy footwork and things going on. Some players may get injured. The sun today is parallel the asteroid. Asculapia is how I think you pronounce it. And it's associated with physicians and healing, as well as Venus is conjunct the asteroid Hygieia, which is about public hygiene. Both of them are considered preservers of health. So yeah, I can see like injuries happening during the World Cup. It also could be more about, you know, what's going on with COVID and RSV and the flu, the trifecta of bronchial illnesses that we may be experiencing going on right now with the winter season in the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah, so we may be seeing some of that stuff. But yeah, I think there's going to be a lot about the World Cup. It could be about fans arguing amongst each other. Hopefully no one will get violent or anything. Hopefully it'll just be a lot of exchanges of words and ideas and opinions and thoughts. Both Gemini and Sagittarius are very concerned about information exchanges, all of the mutable signs, because they all report into Mercury, the planet of communication, and Jupiter, the planet of higher ideals and wisdom. So that's the second thing I wanted to talk about this week, about Jupiter. Jupiter rules the signs of Sagittarius and Pisces. It is the biggest planet in the solar system. And it's thought to have a protective nature. It protects us from asteroids because its size is so large. It blocks people from, um, not people, but (laughs) like, you know, space stuff, space junk from hitting the earth. So I think that's part of the reason it has this association with the cosmic Santa Claus, the planet of abundance, good fortune, luck. You know, sometimes you're just lucky when, say, a car is coming at you and you get out of the way right away or, you know, things like that. Just unexpected bounty when or serendipity when luck and opportunity meet. Jupiter rules this sort of thing. Yeah. It also rules law, morality, ethics, philosophy, big ideas, systems of belief, Mercury rules like the discernible facts and Jupiter, you weave them together into and kind of mutate them into ideas. Now, shadows of Jupiter can be moralizing people who are know-it-alls or are preachy. Jupiter rules religion as well as education. The planet also rules over indulgence of all kinds, and reckless behavior. People have strong Jupiters, just assume everything's going to work out and can take more risks. Now, Mercury and Venus will square Jupiter this week. So keep the archetypal energy of Jupiter in mind when you're talking to people at work and see how the stories play out. So Mercury square Jupiter, there can be displays of massive dexterity um, that we see. I feel like this is gymnast energy. And with the World Cup going on, this could be like a lot of fancy footwork. People may also be like telling fish tales, tall tales, where they're very boastful about whatever, maybe their education or or anything they've done, frankly. And there also can be massive con artist stories in the news. They've been in the news for a while with Mars squaring Neptune and Mars being retrograde and out of bounds. And swindlers, like a swindler gets a lucky break. Maybe there'll be a new Tinder swindler type story. 
Yeah, but use that energy to take time to enjoy cleverly weaved together stories and humor. Sagittarius energy is very humorous, and Mercury and Venus are both in Sagittarius. Now, Venus square Jupiter stories can involve excessive flattery, where someone is just laying it on really thick. Someone may be waxing philosophically about love endlessly, Venus square Jupiter can be overspending. So just keep that in mind with the holiday season. You may like feel like you can afford something you really can't or just you shouldn't be spending that money on that sort of thing. People may be talking about the vacations they're getting ready to go on where they're going to do daredevil stuff like jump off, you know, cliffs into the water and bungee jumping and all this kind of stuff. This is not the holiday season to be doing that sort of thing with Mars retrograde and Gemini square Neptune. That could be the person who's responsible to like pack your parachute is distracted or intoxicated or something and forgets to do something and you jump out of the airplane and go splat. So keep that in mind if you're planning to do any of these sort of sort of things to like really look at who's responsible for your safety and maybe asking some questions before you, you know, go parasailing or, or bungee jumping or any of this kind of stuff. By the end of the week, both Mercury and Venus will move into Capricorn and the energy will settle down, but there could be a couple of wild and crazy days. The last thing I want you to be aware of is there's going to be a full moon at 16 degrees of Gemini on December 7th. Now, this lunation relates back to the solar eclipse at 19 Gemini on June 10th, 2021. That was the new moon, essentially, of this moon phase family. And I talk a lot about these where every nine months there'll be an advancement of the energy where the moon will be at the same degree, but the sun will have moved. And so the first quarter moon was at 19 degrees of Gemini again, but it was in March 10th, 2022, when the sun was at 19 degrees of Pisces, making a first quarter moon. So your chart is activated in the same place, but the story is growing and changing. And so you may be able to connect the dots to a story that started back in 2021. Look about two weeks on either side of that lunar eclipse, but because it was a lunar, I mean, solar eclipse, excuse me, because it was an eclipse, the energy may have even a bigger tail, especially if you have planets around 15 to 20 degrees of the mutable signs of Gemini, Pisces, Sagittarius or Virgo. And now at the full moon of the cycle, all is revealed. And so there may be like a big culmination in the story. So, and think about, you know, what ideas that you came to you back then are driving the long range goals that you're working on now with Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the archer. You know, where did you point your arrow back then and where are you now? This is a great time to, as with every full moon, celebrate any wins. One of the big aspects of this full moon is that the moon, the Gemini moon is conjunct Mars, which is out of bounds and retrograde and doing all the things we talked about in the beginning. There will likely in the news be crimes of passion, shocking crimes of passion that get full exposure with this full moon. And so people may be extra fiery or verbally intense, especially from Wednesday on. Yeah, so keep that in mind. It's also this moon Mars energy is also like cat calling energy and that like the hey baby baby, someone's trying to be funny but they get real aggressive, like street harassment is something you may be seeing as you're moving through your day. Yeah. So keep that in mind. I think we will see stories potentially about 
people in China already, as I'm taping this ahead of time, people are rebelling against COVID lockdowns and getting physical with the people who are trying to, you know, hold them into these detention camps for weeks, months. I don't know. It's been going on. It's just seems just unbelievable. The zero COVID policy is not working. So people may be fighting against the government there. The Saturn Uranus square is separating, but Saturn and Uranus are what's called contraparallel, which is a little bit of a secret opposition. They're at the same declination, but one to the north and one to the south. Yeah, so it's like an opposition. So they're still having a close conversation. So the authority Saturn versus the rebel Uranus. So we may see this, you know, a lot of clashes as well as in Iran with what's going on with the protests against the death of Masha Amini. And when she was in police custody, Saturn square Uranus, that aspect was in effect and really represents what happened. This woman had, you know, a little bit of her hair out of her hijab and she was killed by the morality police, Jupiter morality police. So yeah, people fighting against that. Yeah. And Venus is parallel this intense fixed stars, which is one of the most feared fixed stars, Fasces. It's at eight Capricorn. And it's about extreme intensity. It's part of the Sagittarius constellation, but because of the progression of the equinoxes, the fixed stars move like a degree every 72 years. So with Western astrology, we're time-based, not constellation-based. So the sky doesn't always match where the constellations are anymore because of this progression. So this can be penetrating vision or extreme intensity, but it can be used well to really set your sight on a goal and accomplish things. But it also can deal with very ruthless behavior, cruel and ruthless behavior. So hopefully we won't see more women being persecuted publicly in Iran, but there may be continued discussions about what's going on there. There have been some demonstrations at the World Cup by the people who are the players from Iran, as well as the fans. So we may continue to see some of this, but something may come up to a boiling point or just become more notable in the collective. On Sunday, the word of the day is calm. The moon enters Taurus at 3.36 a.m. Pacific time. We are in the gibbous phase of the moon. And so when you look at the moon in the sky, it looks like it's pregnant with possibilities. So think about that. I want you to use this calming earth energy of the moon being in Taurus to Try to have a calm day as much as you can. Avoid being impulsive. Venus is was squaring Neptune yesterday. So that's the rose-colored glasses where you met someone last night. Oh, and you think they're the cat's meow and you're ready to pack your bags and move in with them. Don't do it. When the fog clears, you're going to realize mm, that wasn't such a good idea. And Venus and the sun are parallel Pluto. So this like can feel like this intense, loving, obsessive energy. There can be love triangles going on. Neptune is just moving very slowly. It's stationed yesterday, and so it's going to start moving direct. And Neptune makes everything foggy. It's like Vaseline on the mirror. So keep calm. Don't make any rash decisions and carry on. On Monday, the word of the day is fishy. This is the day Mercury, the planet of communication, squares Jupiter, the planet that makes things bigger. Opinions may be presented as truth or someone may be telling you a tall tale about how they caught a 2,500 pound fish. So keep that in mind when people are telling you something that may seem a little overblown. If it does, it probably is. On Tuesday, the word of the day is realistic. This is a great day to keep focused on the essentials. The moon enters the air sign of Gemini at 1248 p.m. Pacific time. This is a great time to watch out for any kind of anxious feelings. 
with the moon in Gemini, it can kind of overstimulate the mind or you, people can feel overstimulated. And Mercury will enter the Earth sign of Capricorn at 2.08 p.m. Pacific time. So this is a big shift between the fires of Sagittarius and the earthy groundedness of Capricorn. So when you go back and review the story that was told to you yesterday, you'll really maybe even see more clearly about how it was a little over-exaggerated. On Wednesday, the word of the day is spectacle. There's the full moon at 16 degrees of Gemini at 8.08 p.m. Another feature today and of this full moon that I didn't mention is that the sun, which spotlights thing, is opposite Mars retrograde. So there may be some spectacular defeat at the World Cup, or it may have come a few days ago that people are really talking about. This may be a part of that big news, Mercury and Sagittarius square Jupiter. Sagittarius is very associated. A lot of athletes have strong Sagittarius energy. Yeah, so that might be part of it. People can be in furious conflicts. So this full moon is could be pretty intense. So just keep that in mind. As I spoke about last week, I don't know if there's if uh, Donald Trump has been indicted, but if he wasn't last week, I think it could be this week or there'll be some big news about him. Definitely, I think, in the collective. He's such a martial figure and he has his son in Gemini's moon in Sagittarius. So he has the flip of this full moon, but it's very close to some of his key planets. So yeah, we'll see if he makes a spectacle of himself this day, just like he does every other day. On Thursday, the word of the day is chatter. People may be talking very animatedly on this day with that full moon yesterday and the and the moon's still in Gemini. Also, teeth chattering is coming to me. So, hmm, that's an interesting thought. But yeah, people may be very animated, gossiping about something at the water cooler. I don't know if there's a show that's going to have a big episode or it's just we're still talking about the World Cup and that sort of thing or there's something in the news. Yeah, I just feel like there's going to be a lot of a lot of chatter, gossip, talking, lighthearted banter that sort of thing. Oh, and some might be kind of like have a little edge to it that's a little cruel with Mercury in, in Capricorn. Anyway, the moon will enter Cancer at 11.48 p.m. Pacific time. And this is a big shift where people will become more emotional and more inward and more a little bit more introverted. On Friday, the word of the day is discipline. On this day, the moon is still in cancer and people may be feeling a desire to nurture oneself, you know, like food, cancer rules the stomach. So, and this is watery energy and like soothing oneself with food and things. And this is the day that Venus, the planet of like feel good, squares Jupiter, makes everything bigger. I really want to feel good. So this can be a day where someone really goes over the edge with whatever their weakness is, or spends a lot of money like shopping, retail therapy could be something that someone does on this day. So try to use a little discipline so you don't do anything that you you regret. Venus will enter Capricorn at 7.54 p.m. Pacific time. This could be where, you know, your partner sees what you spent and and like, yeah, there's a, a little bit of a cold reality with that earth sign when Venus moves into that earth sign, like the fun kind of settles down and it's the time to get really practical. On Saturday, the word of the day is humdrum. So with the shifts of energy with Mercury and Venus moving into Capricorn, it really cools down things. It's kind of like a thud type imagery is what I'm getting with this. And now Neptune's starting to build up steam. So like all the fun that was had in, over the past week and the wild stories and the tall tales and yeah, all of this kind of thing, kind of, eh, there's just kind of like an uh kind of energy. So just, you know, just be aware. You may not feel like you're having quite as much fun as you were, but enjoy the simple things today. Yeah, simple pleasures is something to think about today and maybe reminiscing about what happened before. 
So that's it for this week's episode. Feel free to email me at Celeste at astrologybyceleste.com with any astrology and action stories about what you experienced or let me know how the daily themes are playing out for you. Take care and I'll catch you next week. Thank you for listening to Celestial Insights. To learn more about my work, please visit my website, astrologybyceleste.com, where I offer personal readings, horary consultations, cosmic coaching, group events, and classes to help guide people to higher levels of fulfillment. You can also find me on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Facebook at Astrology by Celeste. If you enjoyed Celestial Insights, please help others find the show. Follow, rate it five stars, or write a nice review. I would so appreciate it. I'm astrologer, coach, and intuitive Celeste Brooks, and I'll be back next week. 